Exactly. One on the internet was in love with the Grinch. When asked if they enjoyed it, they'd say yes in a pinch. Jim Carrey's so funny, and Ron Howard's a gem, and this holiday classic is perfect for them. Yes, the film seemed to make so many people happy, but the grump of Channel Awesome found it all crappy. He hated the grit, every part of the movie. Please don't ask why, we're not sure how this could be. It could be his head wasn't screwed on just right. Or perhaps it could be that his shoes were too tight. Why would shoes affect how I feel about something? I don't get that. But the most likely reason of all, I should think, is the grump thought his brain was two sizes too big. But whatever the reason you might want to pick, the grump spent his time hating the flick. Staring down with a grumpy grump frown. He never got what pleased all the people in town. Can't they see? Said the Grump. That the remake is crap. I'd rather get my nuts caught in a Lorax trap. P.S. That's gonna suck too. The jokes are atrocious. The lines make me weepy. They scare up the Grinch when the Who's are more creepy. The original's a classic. No fixing required. Whoever said this needs an update is a big fat fuck liar. Pop cultural references don't make a film work, just makes you look like a big, dumb, lazy-ass jerk! On top of that, who the hell made Dr. Seuss PG? PG? Oh, I see! Seuss was never child-friendly! And the more the Grump thought how this movie could sting, the more the Grump thought... I must stop this whole thing! Why, for 11 damn years I put up with it now! I must stop Christmas from sucking! But how? Then, the Grump got an idea, an awful idea. The Grump got a wonderful, awful idea. I know what to do, the Grump said, sitting tall. If I can't enjoy it, I'll ruin it for them all! A critique of this stinker is just what they need? I'll tell them the truth. My words must take heed! So come on, you pansies, let the bashing begin! Stop smoking that hoo hash and let us dive in. So this world we discover takes place on a flake. Ah! Trust me, I did him a favor for God's sake. We see the Who's in Whoville are merry and bright. Many of them you'll be seeing in your nightmares tonight. Seriously, these Who's are freaky as hell. Were their mothers all pregnant when they fell down that well? Dad? Yeah? Doesn't this seem like a bit much? This is what Christmas is all about. But we see our main innocent, and of course her dad too. This is Cindy Lou Who, who is no more than two. Well, but we'll give him a little leeway. Everyone getting all kebabbled. Doesn't this seem superfluous? Good God, kid. Does someone put your hair in a blender? It looks like the penis do from the film Last Airbender. I guess I could use a little social interaction. We then see the Grinch, the epitome of cruel. And yes, to be fair, that makeup is pretty cool. He looks just like the Grinch, despite the film's flaws. But hey, could be worse. They could have given him cat claws. I merely noticed that you are improperly packaged, my dear. So, as you'd guess, he hates Christmas to a T. And so would I if I lived in this town constantly. For Whoville looks dirty and kind of polluted. There's smog everywhere and the colors are muted. The wide angle makes things look strangely intense. And is it me or did someone rub Vaseline on the lens? What happened to you? It was too Grinch! <laughs> and the constant camera movement has got to be the worst. There's more Dutch angles here than in Battlefield Earth. This doesn't look magical. It's ugly and heinous. This isn't Christmas time. It's fear and loathing in Las Vegas. But at least we know the Who's have Christmas spirit in check. Well, I'd blow every fuse if I tried to keep up with you, Martha May. <laughs> oh, no, strike that. They're as phony as Glenn Beck. Isn't this antique, darling? For you see, these Who's are competitive and beyond materialistic. A town that just loves the spirit? Pfft, I guess that was unrealistic. For these Who's are corrupted and commercial to the max. But don't worry, it's just a story arc written by talentless hacks. Well, good night, Betty. And geez, is it me or are the decorations really bright? Is your house on fire, Claw? No, those are Christmas lights.
Ugh. Really? We're letting the brat sing here? It sounds like something that came out of Charlotte Church's rear. My world is changing. I'm rearranging. Now don't get me wrong, I'm sure she's trying her best, but we need this song like we needed one in Polar Express. It's pointless, unneeded, and doesn't sound good. Be a ever so heinous. And speaking of things that should be avoided if they could. <laughs> I give Carrie credit. This role can't be easy. To act in green latex is probably not breezy. Hate, hate, hate. Hate, hate, hate. Double hate. Loathe entirely. But... God, is he annoying! I'm sorry, but it's true! Is there a law to how much mugging a single person can do? What if it's a cash bar? How dare they? All right, I'll go. But I'll be fashionably late. <sighs> Just because you can make faces doesn't mean that you should. Can't you once say a line like a normal person would? take anything from the great Boris Karloff? You sound like Sean Connery if his nostrils just fell off! Those hooves are hard to frazzle, Max, but we did our worst, and that's all that matters. Only on account of villainy. The little Cindy Lou wants to find out about him. If I was her, I'd avoid him at every single whim. Where did he come from? Oh! Well, <laughs> he came the way all who babies come. Drift from the sky in their own tumor cellars. So we see the Grinch as a small little baby. That, or perhaps a young Gary Busey, maybe. As he grows up even older, and we see schools at hand. He looks like Gizmo if he was thrown in the washer with a green crayon. Although I hardly remember him, I didn't have time to socialize. I was far too busy with my studies. We see a girl who likes him. Guess she has a thing for green, too. You think that's weird? I know a chick who has a thing for blue. You don't have a chance with her. You're eight years old and you have a beard. So the Grinch was made fun of for being so damn hairy? Boy, who'd have thought the guy from Passions would be more subtle than Jim Carrey? What a lovely family heirloom! So he makes her a gift out of all that he saved, but then he thinks that maybe he should give himself a shave. So he goes ahead and shaves his chin and leaves a couple nicks. And for some reason that gets the class laughing all like hicks. Is it me or are the Who's just who rebel creatures? They show us the true meaning of Christmas in this feature? Even the teacher is laughing. Dude, what's up with that? It's not that funny, lady. She's as contrived as those brats. I hate Christmas! So, whatever the reason, his heart or his shoes, he stood outside his cave, hating the who. Wait a minute! Whatever reason, dude! Are you high? They just told you the reason, you dumb, stupid guy! It's because he was mocked all the way from the start! What? Did you just fall asleep at that part? So they look for a ringleader, a cheermeister, they say, to take on the role just before Christmas Day. The cheermeister is the one who deserves a back slap or a toast. And it goes to the soul at Christmas who needs it most. And I believe that soul is the Grinch. She's right. <laughs> so Cindy tells the Grinch in his Grinchy Grinch lair, Dude, do her parents ever accompany her anywhere? How dare you enter the Grinch's lair! The impudent! The audacity! The unmitigated gall! Another unmistakable sign of the heavy-jeevies! No! You're doomed! <sighs> so if you're a strange person, for one reason or another, who likes to watch men act like Snarf's deformed brother, then this scene's for you! I'm so filled with glee! Now please, never make eye contact with me. What do you want?! I came to invite you to be Holiday Cheermeister! So the Grinch heads on down, he'll be glad that he did, because this scene happens. <laughs> you know, for kids! So they force him to party and have a good time, but one certain present starts to eat at his mind. A razor, it appears, to have dampened his cheer. It didn't make sense then, and it really doesn't here. This whole Christmas season is stupid, stupid, stupid! <laughs> Mistletoe. 
Now pucker up and kiss it, Hoobell! <laughs> Dr. Seuss would be proud. This is what he intended. Mistletoe butts for Mom to get offended. And Jim Carrey's range once again is in stock. Can you believe he used to talk from his ass? I'm shocked! So the Grinch goes crazy and starts attacking the folks. It's because I'm weird, isn't it? Okay, that's a good joke. He takes all his antics and goes all the way! There's an explosion in the Grinch. Who directed this, Michael Bay? I'm hurt, Lou. I'm hurt and I don't hurt easily. So he didn't steal Christmas, more assassinated it. When we finally get the plot that the writers had procrastinated. He wants to steal Christmas after Santa gets moving. Wait, Santa's in this movie? That's a little confusing. But no matter, he gets his stuff and starts to head down to visit the sleeping Who's in their quiet little town. At the risk of sounding incredibly droll. Oh, I can't help it. Do a barrel roll. <laughs> so this stuff is actually pretty close to the book. Yeah, I know. I guess someone actually did take a look. Santa Claus, what are you doing with our tree? But you know, that old Grinch was so smart and so slick. And thankfully, Cindy was as dumb as a brick. Santa, what's Christmas really about? Vengeance! I mean... <laughs> then he patted her head, and he got her a drink, and he sent her to bed. But hey, she could still have some fun with me. I'll eat her liver with baba beans and a nice Chianti. Santa? What? Don't forget the Grinch. Ah, it's seeing how the Grinch is someone she knows, but it fooled her in the book, so I guess we'll let it go. But here's a scene I simply cannot let fly. It's when the Grinch sees the mayor's house and needs to drop by. <laughs> Martha, have you ever kissed a man who lost his tonsils twice? No. Silly. <laughs> but it's an experience that I've always longed for. Kiss me, you fool. development guy kissing a dog's derriere? Did your five-year-old decide to start writing this part? Kissing dog's anuses? Ho ho, this is high art! Now, just to clarify, this is the Christmas classic you all love? A dog's ass, a guy's lips, pleasantly shoved? Have you gone crazy or totally insane? How can this scene cause none of you pain? What the hell would PETA say for this little canine? Oh hell, as long as he's not wearing a tanuki suit, it's fine. So as the film promised, he steals the holiday, which puts all the Who's in alarming dismay. Invite the Grinch to sky Christmas! You choose to listen to a little not to be taken seriously, girl. It takes him a while, oh, five minutes or more, to realize that Christmas doesn't come from a store. I'm glad he took our presents. You can't hurt Christmas, Mr. Mayor. Because it isn't about the, the gift. Well, I don't need anything more for Christmas than this right here. My family. You know, I kind of like the original. Yeah, I know, big surprise, but it made sense that they already knew where Christmas lies. For nothing could dampen it, and that was uplifting. Here there's blaming and yelling before they start shifting. The message is there, but it doesn't stand as tall. And if you can't remake it better, WHY REMAKE IT AT ALL?! Maybe Christmas, perhaps. Means a little bit more. Wow, way to ruin such a touching little scene. Good God, for a moment, I almost saw a subtlety. That's right, keep yelling, make faces like a whore. It's lasted the whole movie, we can take a bit more. <laughs> so, God's in this movie? Well, that I didn't know. 
Does he say, I am the creator of a television show. Hi, Mr. Grinch! <gasps> so with a smile from Cindy and a pedo smile from him, he brings the gifts back and the town lets him in. He hands back the presents and everyone is happy. Only one other thing could make this ending more sappy. My heart belongs to someone else. Hmm? The girl all grown up wants to date him now, see? Because once you've gone green, there's nothing in between. So Christmas is as high as anybody reaches, and the Grinch carved the beast made from fresh roasted sneeches. Who wants the gizzard? I do. Too late. That'll be mine. That's the film. Oh my god, could it be any longer? I bet you're wondering what I would do to make it any stronger. Well, maybe you could shorten it by an hour or two. And maybe some bright colors for a friendlier view. A more subtle actor might be anticipated. And hey, you know what else? Why not make it animated? Yes, those are the changes that I would insist. Oh wait, we don't need to. It fucking exists! The original was fine, spend your time watching that. Much better than this horrifying crap in a hat. It's downright unpleasant, unbearable, unfunny. Nothing in this movie seemed colorful or sunny. It's not fun to look at. It's not fun to watch. How on earth did this classic get so goddamn botched? I really hate this movie, and you know what? So should you. I'm the nostalgia critic, I remember, so you don't have to. Ho, ho! Said the grump, uploading his hit. They're finding right now that this movie is shit. They're watching right now, I know just what they'll do. Their mouths will hang open for a moment or two, and then they'll cry the genius of you know who. Now those are reactions that I simply must read. He went to the comments to take a look and see. But the reactions he got didn't seem very sad. If anything, these reactions seemed rather glad. Still loved the movie from beginning to end. There was no one to anger, upset, or offend. He didn't stop the people from liking it. They loved it. Somehow or other, it was still just as beloved. And the grub feeling like he's been horribly conned sat puzzling and puzzling. What the hell's going on? They like mistletoe butt! being harassed! They like seeing a pervert kiss a dog's ass! He puzzled and he puzzled till his puzzler was all. Then the grump thought of something he hadn't before. Just because he hates something doesn't mean others should. He could share, not force, his opinion like others would. For it's all our different outlooks that makes us people grow. Everyone is different, like every flake of snow. For different points of view could exist for a reason. To learn about one another, and to make each other decent. Nah, I'm right there wrong. Well, fuck you then. Pucker up and kiss it, Hoobell! <laughs>